Hello, this is Mrs. Capizzi with the Calculating Cats, and I'm here with a help video for Topic 5-1, Mental Math Find Quotients. And for this topic, I just want to review a few vocabulary words. When you're dividing, uh, a dividend divided by a divisor equals a quotient. So the quotient is the answer to the division problem. So for example, if I had 12 divided by 4, that equals 3. 12 would be my dividend, 4 would be my divisor, and 3 would be my quotient. And another vocabulary word we talk about in this topic is a variable. And a variable is a symbol or a letter that stands for a number. For example, if we're looking for how many flowers, we might choose F to be our variable to stand for the word flower. So I'm going to be doing an example of that later in the video. So let's get started. So today we were looking at patterns in our multiplication and division. So I just wanted to review what a fact family looks like. So here we have 36 divided by 9. So 36 is my dividend, so that goes up here in my fact family triangle, and 9 would go down here. And then this is my unknown. So in a fact family triangle, the two numbers at the bottom corners, those are your multiplication facts. And I say we slide and divide. So 36 divided by 9 would equal what goes here. So 36 divided by 9 equals 4. So I can fill in the 4 here. And I also know that if I'm going the other way, 36 slide and divide, 36 divided by 4 equals 9. You could also think about this as 9 times what number gives you 36. So then we look at the multiplication pattern. So if I know 36 divided by 9 equals 4, I can use that to help me with 360 divided by 9. So the basic fact is 36 divided by 9, which is 4, and then I have got one zero there that I need to add on. So 360 divided by 9 equals 40. Then here I've got 3,600 divided by 9. Again, the basic fact is 36 divided by 9, which is 4, but this time I need to add 1, 2 zeros. 1, 2. Now the next example I have is special because this time the basic fact ends in a zero. So you have to be careful when you're doing mental math when the basic fact ends in a zero. So 40 divided by 5 is 8. So I can use that basic division fact to help me with 400 divided by 5. So my basic fact is still 40 divided by 5, which is 8. But you want to be careful. This 0 is part of the basic fact. It does not go in the answer. So the only 0 that goes in the answer is the one that's not part of the basic fact. So 400 divided by 5 equals 80. And here's the last one in this pattern, 4,000 divided by 5. Again, my basic fact is 40 divided by 5, which is 8. And I have to add on these two zeros. So 4,000 divided by 5 equals 800. And let's do two more examples. Here I've got 7,200 divided by 8. So I'm going to look at my basic fact, 72 divided by 8, or I can think about what times 8 gives me 72. So 72 divided by 8 equals 9. So my answer will be 9 plus 1, 2 zeros. So 7,200 divided by 8 equals 900. And here's another example. 2,000 divided by 5. 
And again, you want to be careful because this basic fact is 20 divided by 5, and the 20 ends in a 0. But 20 divided by 5 is 4, and then these two zeros at the end need to be added on. And remember, you don't add in the zero. That's part of the basic fact. So I want you guys to try these two examples here, 900 divided by 3 and 4,800 divided by 6. So when you do those, I want you to bring them into school and show one of your teachers so that we can check them. And the second thing I do want to go over is the word problems that we did in class today. So here's one of them. Molly and five friends picked a total of 300 oranges. If each girl picked the same number of oranges, how many oranges did Molly pick? So you want to be careful here with the wording. So it's Molly and five friends. So Molly and five friends is actually six people. So if they had 300 oranges and each picked the same amount, I would divide that by six. And my basic fact here is 30 divided by six. And 30 divided by 6 is 5, and then I would add on this 0. So that means that Molly picked 50 oranges. And the last example uses what we call a bar diagram. So let's go through that example. So here I've got... On Saturday afternoon, 350 people attended a play. The seating was arranged in seven equal rows. How many people sat in each row? Draw a bar diagram, write and solve an equation. So in my problem here, I'm looking at what are they asking me to find here. And I want to find out how many people. Okay, so I'm going to choose the variable P to stand for people. So they want a bar diagram. Now if there's seven equal rows, I'm going to draw a bar diagram that has seven equal boxes. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, let me make this a little bit longer, seven. And the 350 will go on top and each one of these boxes represents a row. So I want to know how many people are in each row. So I want to know how many people P are in each of these rows. Okay. So my problem would be 350 divided into seven equal rows would equal P the number of people. So my basic fact here is 35 divided by 7, which is 5 plus my 0. So my equation, so I solved for the number of people, P equals 50. So that would mean there are, oops, let me just move my paper here, there are 50 people in each row. Thanks for listening. If you have any questions or comments, please comment below or email us. Have a wonderful afternoon.